Hi, it's Doug Karsh at Yost Ice Arena, and this is Inside Michigan Hockey. Coming up on this week's edition, the best weekend of the year for the Wolverines. They sweep Ohio State, including a win in another outdoor game. On tap for Michigan, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. We'll get Red Berenson's thoughts coming up here on Inside Michigan Hockey. Wolverines entered play ranked 15th in the country, Ohio State number two. Friday night's game in Columbus was all Michigan. The Wolverines jump out to a 2-0 lead at the end of period one, and that was enough. Two empty net goals late, 46 saves from goalie Sean Hunwick, and a 4-0 shutout win. Sunday at Progressive Field in Cleveland, outdoor game. Wolverines have done this before. The Buckeyes have not, and it showed. Michigan goes on to a 4-1 win to sweep the second-ranked Buckeyes. It's a huge weekend in a big game like this, but the, uh, the three points are huge and six points overall this weekend are big for us. It was a lot of fun just like last year. It was, it was a, a good ending to, uh, to a great weekend. Nobody works harder or stronger than Patter or Glendon and up front Wallet and in goal with one goal against in the whole weekend, Hunwood. And that's what, that's what college hockey is all about. That's what college sports is about. The seniors are the guys that know what it takes, and they're going to do it. And they're going to do it. And everybody else is trying to be like the seniors. That's why we're singing this song tonight. So I want the seniors to lead it. Can we sing it any slower for our athletic director? Let's slow it down. No, seriously. Let's slow it down. Slow it down. We're stopping. You guys always do it slow in the beginning, then you keep going fast. Fucking up, Josh. One, two, three. Hail to the victors out in hell. To the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan, the leading man. Hail to the victors out in hell. To the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan. And we're joined right now by the head coach of the Wolverines, Red Berenson. And coach, people are going to see the result from the weekend, the way you guys have been playing lately, and say Michigan's back. In your opinion, why is Michigan back? Well, we're playing harder, Doug. We're playing better defensively. We're, we're playing better with the puck. We've got a little more confidence. And, uh, and I think our team is, is coming together. You know, it takes a while for a team to really find out what kind of a team they can be, and we're starting to be that team. So it, it's, uh, it's a little bit of everything. But I would say if, it, if I had to say one thing, I would say it's senior leadership. Our seniors are rock solid and led by pattern on defense, Glenn Denning up front, Wahlberg up front, and Hunwick in goal. They're leading the charge. Well, let's talk about Hunwick on Friday night. 46 saves, outstanding. And that was one of those 46 save performances. Watching it, it felt like a team 46 saves. It was the quality of the Ohio State shots weren't what you would want if you're coaching Ohio State. No, his best uh, shots against were in the first period. I think there were four grade eight chances in the first period. They gave them 19 shots. I don't know if they had 19 shots, but they definitely had four good scoring chances. And he made the saves look e easy. He was in position. He did not give the other team a life. Sure enough, we get two goals. It's a whole different game because of Sean Hunwick. Coach, you've recruited a lot of great players to Michigan. Sean Hunwick currently is number one in all-time save percentage and number one in goals against. And quite frankly, he's not supposed to be here. Do you marvel at the story even still? Well, I really do. And, you know, the one thing you learn about, uh, about kids when you're coaching is you never know about what's inside a kid. And you never know what a kid might become. And we've had a lot of great kids here at Michigan that weren't supposed to be that good. And we've had a lot of kids that were supposed to be good. But uh, he definitely is a special story and, and good for him. I mean, you know the story, but, uh, and he's the real deal. He's not a fluke. It's got to be gratifying for your team, too. You know how much they hate Michigan down there, and you're only going to get the one game in their building, but to go in and get the shutout win. That was a big win, Doug. That was a statement for us. And, uh, you know, I thought they might be a little bit on their heels, but uh, we definitely had something to do with that. They had a great crowd. Uh, it was a good battle, and, and our team showed up, and we earned that. And, and every player on the ice showed up and had a strong game. Now, you, the, the number two team in the land, they've got their outdoor game. This is a game I'm sure they've been pointing to, and you've been on this stage before. How much did that matter on Sunday when you beat them 4-1 in their outdoor marquee event? Well, I, you know, I think the games uh, that we played in the past, we played well in. Our team seems to like that. I mean, I know I like it, uh, but they've relished it. They've embraced it, you know, no matter if it was in Wisconsin or at Michigan State or at Ohio State. And, uh, and we did that again. I mean, uh, the big chill was a great 
feeling to win at home, but to go on the road like this and uh, and play as hard as we did and stick with it like that. Well, that was a man's game, Doug. If you were at the ice level, I mean, it was it was a physical, hard-fought game, and our team showed up and we played like men and we got rewarded. Wahlberg, Brown, and Gupta come through again. That group right there has really come together for you and a really balanced scoring group. No question. Uh, they're a hard line to stop. Uh, they're just getting going, really, and uh, and 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 they're right now. Uh, you know, they're a, they've taken a lot of pressure off the other forwards. On the other hand, now you're going to see other guys start picking up goals because they're not going to be as checked as closely. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that line is, and, and let's face it, it's not a fluke, Doug. I mean, Guptill has been scoring no matter who he played with. And, uh, and Brownie is a known scorer, but a little streaky. Well, anyway, he's in a good streak right now. David Wahlberg's playing the best hockey of his career. Well, I was about to mention the two veterans, Brown and Wahlberg. And, and if this was the best streak, because Brown, we've seen it come and go. But this looks like he's put together a nice streak, and now you got Wahlberg, who one of his goals on Saturday, Sunday looked like he almost accidentally put it in the net. Well, he went to the net. He cut to the net like he should have, and then he, he got out of the way so he didn't run into the goalie. And the goalie was, I mean, he really backed into the net and, and let the puck leak in under him. So it was a good play on Wahlberg, maybe a bad goal, but it was a good attempt to go hard to the net. One of the great moments from that outdoor game came after the game when a local reporter asked the players and asked Coach Berenson what their experience was with baseball growing up. I've always been a Tigers fan. I still go to Tigers games every once in a while. Uh, I played baseball a couple years growing up. Um, nothing special, nothing serious, just having a good time, but that's really it baseball-wise. Uh, I think the extent of my baseball career was t-ball, so that was... <laughs> Actually, I was a pretty good catcher when I went to Michigan, and I was trying out for the team, and the coach wasn't giving me the time of day, and, and I asked around why. He said, oh, they've got, a, uh, they've got a pretty good catcher, Bill Freehan, who was hitting over 400 then, so <clears throat> I stuck to hockey. So, Coach, uh, you didn't unseat Bill Freehan, huh? Well, I came to Michigan, I thought I was a pretty good baseball player and a catcher, and we came out for the team. There were three of us on the team that we tried out for the Michigan baseball team. And Don Lund threw us a tattered old ball and told us to play catch. And sooner or later, we got the message that they weren't serious about us. And I asked, I mean, how come you won't give us a shot? And they said, we've got a, free, we've got a, a player named Bill Freehan, who's our catcher, and he's batting 450. And uh, that was a good enough answer. So that was the end of my baseball career at Michigan. You didn't give another position a look or anything? They didn't give us the time of day. And, and Don Lund and I became friends later, but I, I reminded him of the tryout he never gave us. All right, let's talk a little bit about Notre Dame this weekend. First of all, the excitement of their new building and their commitment to college hockey. Well, that's good for uh, college hockey, definitely. Notre Dame's played in a substandard uh, facility for a long time. And, uh, and good for them that they've made the commitment. They've got, I, I understand it's a great building, so we'll see on, we'll get down there Thursday night and play Friday and Saturday. But uh, as far as we're concerned, Doug, we're going down there to, to come back with points. And uh, Notre Dame and Michigan are, are just about neck and neck in the standings right now. And this is the only two games we play them in their barn. We've got to make them count. They're ranked in the top 10. They got the league's leading score. Talk about the challenge of the Fighting Irish on the ice. Well, and, and they're as good as it gets. On the, offensively and defensively, Doug, they've been a, a real a consistent team all year, maybe except for one weekend. But last weekend, uh, they lost two close games. They're going to come out with a snarl, and we better be ready for it. And everybody knows Michigan and Notre Dame, huge brand names in college athletics, won't be in the same conference in the near future. Is this a rivalry you'd like to see continue? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I don't know how, how often we'll play them in the future. It depends on a lot of things. But, uh, you know, since they've been in the CCHA, the rivalry started to, to click. And uh, since uh, uh, Jeff Jackson arrived in South Bend, their team elevated their performance. They became a top team. And, uh, and that's what makes a rivalry is two good teams. So it's, it's going well now. Both teams are good teams. This will be a good weekend of hockey. Coach, best of luck. Thank you.